being content. Today I want to take you into Philippians chapter 4, and our devotional, though the title seems uh, rather simple, it's full of, the passage is full of some meat to chew on for you today. So, if you have time, get your Bible, turn to Philippians chapter 4. Paul wrote the book of Philippians, actually the letter to the church of Philippi, while he was in jail. And the truth is that he could have been executed at any moment. But in, st in spite of that reality, listen to what Paul wrote. He said, Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So for today's devotional, I want to point you to three principles about contentment that jump right out of this passage here. And the first one is simply this. You can learn to be content. The first thing we learn from Paul is contentment is something that can be learned. Paul said, I have learned in whatever situation I am, to be content. He learned to be content. He learned the secret of rising above his suffering. He learned the secret of rising above the situations in life. And in the midst of triumphs and trials, Paul kept his focus on heavenly realities. He lived his life as a believer with that attitude. Listen, listen to what he wrote to the church at Colossae in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. He said, if, if then you've been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. And then he wrote to the Corinthians. He wrote this in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. He said, For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. I was thinking about this idea of contentment, and I wondered if maybe that's why older people are often more content than younger people. They have, dis they have discovered things that, like, for example, stuff, things cannot satisfy us. Things cannot solve our problems, or they can't give us security. So for Paul, the secret was he learned. He learned to rely on God's presence. If you look at verses in, in Philippians chapter 3, if you look, look at verses 3 and verses 19 as well as our passage, you learn that he relied on God's presence, God's power, God's promises, and God's provision. He learned to be content. The second principle he shares about being content is this. Contentment isn't about circumstances. It's about attitude. Paul was content even though he was in prison and he could die at any moment. He was content, even though some were using his imprisonment to advance their own cause. Even in the worst of circumstances, Paul found a sense of satisfaction and joy in life. This is what he meant when he said in verse 12, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Listen, being content is not saying, I just don't care anymore. No, contentment says I'm going to live fully and joyfully no matter what situation I'm placed in. It means you're trusting that God has a reason for the things that are going on in your life. You see, God has a plan to use you and to develop you through these things. Then if what Paul is telling us is a true, then we should be able to find contentment in even the most difficult of circumstances. It's all a question of about attitude. See, contentment comes when we're willing to see things, to see things in our lives through God's point of view. And remember, God's perspective is an eternal perspective. We look at, the th we look at things in a temporary light, and, and that limits us. So it's Paul who reminds us to focus on what's important, what's necessary. Paul's attitude was that he was going to focus on what he was supposed to do, not on what he felt he should have. Paul detached himself from the non-essentials in life, and he concentrated on what was eternal. And that, my friends, is an attitude worth developing. Now, a third principle that Paul shares about being content actually shows us how he was able to maintain the perspective and attitude that he had, and that's this. The third principle, contentment is anchored to your trust in Christ. 
Paul said, I have learned, no, he said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So here's the key. Paul had learned that as long as he put his trust in Christ, he could find joy in any circumstance. He could trust God in a palace or in a dungeon. He could know joy while he was being applauded by crowds or being beaten by those who hated him. And all those were scenarios in Paul's life. Uh, just remember, Paul was the one that held a hymn sing in jail. Paul was the one who witnessed to a king while he was being exam examined by the king and was in, in, on trial. Paul saw every circumstance as an opportunity sent by God, and he rejoiced in it. Uh, if we would go back to Psalm 73, verses 23 through 26, the psalmist understands this concept. He says, Nevertheless, I am continually with me, with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So, the secret of contentment is realizing that when you are His, when you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you already have the greatest blessing. When you become a true child of God, you have been granted the highest honor you can be given. And when you trust Christ for salvation, you have the greatest security and the brightest hope. If you put your hope in Christ and not the things of the world, you, my friend, will know contentment. In his book, When God Whispers Your Name, Max Licato gives an interesting illustration. And it kind of explains what Paul is reminding us where our perspective should be. <clears throat> Here's the quote. Licato says, we're not happy here because we're not at home here. We're not happy here because we're not supposed to be happy here. We are, like Peter tells us, foreigners and strangers in this world. And then he goes on to say, I'll continue the quote, Take a fish and place him on the beach. Watch his gills gasp and his scales dry. Is he happy? No. How do you make him happy? Do you cover him with a mountain of cash? Do you bring him a chair and some sunglasses? Do you bring him a, his favorite magazine or a martini? Uh, do you wardrobe him in a double-breasted fins and people-skinned shoes? Of course not. Then how do you make him happy? Well, you take the fish and you put him back in his element. You put him back in the water. He'll never be happy on the beach simply because he was not made for the beach. You and I as believers are not made for this world. So we should not seek to find peace and contentment in the world and in what it has to offer. So as we close, let me remind you, allow me to refresh your mind on three principles for contentment. One, you can learn to be content. Number two, contentment is not about circumstances, it's about your attitude. And number three, contentment is anchored to your trust in Christ. My last sentence, I pray that your life will be marked by an attitude of contentment as challenged in God's word through the example of Paul. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that in the midst of our day-to-day -day life and living, that when we find ourselves bumped up against by circumstances and situations, some that are desirable and some that aren't, no matter what, we learn from Paul that there's the secret of contentment that can be learned. And it comes when we realize we're anchored to Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for those watching this video and for those uh, that are struggling maybe with the things that have come against them and they've allowed them to overwhelm them, instead of seeing them through your eyes, through your perspective. Thank you, Father, that these are light and momentary, as Paul said. And Lord, thank you, too, for teaching us through your word how we can learn to be content in any and every circumstance. Thank you for the Apostle Paul and his testimony. More than, more than anything, Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and for all that we have because of him. In Jesus' name. Amen.